this section here, we're going to talk about singularity functions. So the idea that you could have a singular function, a function is singular if it's either discontinuous or if it has discontinuous derivatives. So, you know, if you've got yourself a nice little graph that goes like this, you know, it's not a singular matrix. It's a pretty one. It's continuous. So if you've got something that's more like this, you know, clearly that's singular because it's clearly discontinuous. Um, if you have something like this even, it's discontinuous because remember if you have a corner, it has an undefined derivative. So therefore, it's singular. Okay, so this is going back to, yeah, calculus. Um, so you have a, an undefined derivative, undefined slope, so derivatives are discontinuous, therefore this would be considered to be a singular function. Now, the singular functions that we have the most concern about are the following. The first one that we have is the unit ramp. And the unit ramp is a function that will start, um, I'm going to mark my so one and one. A unit ramp is going to look like this. It's going to be zero, and then it's going to go up like that. It's going to have a point here at one, one. So it has a slope of 1. And that's what we call it a unit ramp. A unit has to do with a slope that's equal to 1. And we will use the u to represent it. We basically say that u, or not u, sorry, we're going to use r. r for ramp, if it would make sense. Um, r for ramp and say that it's equal to 0 for t less than or equal to 0 and it's equal to t otherwise, okay? So that's a unit ramp. Now, next thing that we can do is we can look at something that we call the unit step. And to get the unit step, actually what we're going to do is we're going to take the derivative of the unit ramp. So let's look at how you would take the derivative of this function. So the slope over here is zero. Right? So since the slope is zero there, I don't know why I did all that. Ah! Because I'm crazy, that's why. So the slope is zero. So that means over here, the slope is zero. And now here, the slope is one. Right? So the slope is zero, and then the slope is one. And remember what we said a minute ago, if we have a corner, there's no derivative. There's a, it's a discontinuity. So if we were in math class, we would do this, okay? Um, but we're not in math class. We are in circuits, and so we're just going to draw like this. We're going to go ahead and connect the lines, which, again, if we, were in, um, if we were in math, we would do this, let's say open circles, and, you know, it goes like this. That's the derivative. But, again, this isn't math. This is circuits. And so we are just going to say that it looks like this. But we can still say that the unit step is going to be um, 0 for t less than 0. It's going to be 1 for t greater than 0. And then here at t equals exactly 0, it's undefined. Now don't sweat that too much, but, but that's kind of what we're looking at. So just remember that the unit step is the derivative of the unit ramp. Now if we take the derivative of the unit step, we're going to end up with what we call the unit impulse. Okay, so we're going to call the unit impulse, you think we call it i, but we don't, we call it um, lowercase delta. And it's going to be the derivative of the unit step. So think about what we've got here. Um, so for this section, the slope is 0, right? Oops. And for this section here, the slope is 0, right? So again, it's like, well, that's not very interesting. Um, but again, if we were mathematicians, we would have drawn it like this. Now, what is the slope here? The slope here is infinity, right? So really, this goes up like this forever and ever and ever. goes up to infinity. Okay. Um, Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you. Um, so whenever we define our unit impulse, what we do, I'll do it one way and then I'll show you another way. So we basically say, okay, well, it's zero for t less than zero, and it's zero for t greater than zero. Now at t equals zero, it's, again, undefined. Okay. But what we do is we define um, the, <laughs> this is going to just make it, I'm going to write this, you're going to say, of course, now it makes perfect sense that, not negative zero, zero from the negative to zero from the positive dt is one. Great. Duh. Um, okay, so what we mean by this is that the unit impulse is a, um, what's the best way to say it? It's a, rather than saying it goes out to infinity, we say, um, we usually draw it like this and write a one next to it. And what we really mean is it's kind of like a height of one. Um, the integral, so when we say the area under the curve from zero's approaches from the left, and so zero's approaches from the left, and zero's approaches from the right is equal to one. So basically, even though it's infinitely skinny, we say its total area under the curve is one. So it looks like this. Um, how can I describe it? So if it was continuous, you know, it'd be like this, and then we'd say, you know, the area under the curve is one, right? Um, let me draw it like this. So we could say area under the curve, we could pretend that's one. And as I make it more narrow, I can still keep saying the area under the curve is one, but as I make it narrower at the bottom, I have to make it taller to make the total area under the curve to still be one. So if I have to make it infinitely tall, even though it's infinitely skinny, we're still saying that the area under the curve is one. Is that helpful? I can't tell. So I'm going to try it again. So, you know, you could, if you pretend that that area under the curve is one, I could equally pretend that the area under that curve is one, or the area under this curve is one. And so what we're doing at the unit impulse is we're basically saying it's, you know, forever and ever high, but the area of the curve is still 1. So even though it's an undefined function, basically we're saying, the best way to think about it is to think of it as a height of 1 at t equals 0. Um, ooh, that's all I meant. Thank you. And rather than even thinking about it as a height, um, maybe think about it as an it has a height. It has a height of infinity. You know, area is base times height, and ours has a height of infinity and a base of zero, which is one over infinity, so it cancels out to one. Yeah, this is weird math, but basically the idea is um, we're saying that it's it's the equivalent of multiplying of having a having a shout. I mean, it's an impulse. Um, it's an impulse with a magnitude of one at that exact moment in time. And um, there's no precursor to it. There's no aftershock. It's like instantaneously, it's like, ah, and it's one. And that's, that's a unit impulse. Um, I think I'm getting way too into the math here for the purposes. I just want you to actually understand um, what's going on. But you'll see us do a unit impulse and draw it in like that to say, you know, it's got a unit impulse with a height of one.